Hey guys, Chris here from Sir Puff Gaming. Welcome back. Today we're going to tackle the Fortune Bow build. This is only exclusive to the DLC, so you will need to have all current DLC in order to get the bow and arrow. So one of the main things with this deck guys is a lot of the intel that you will find scattered within the levels, they're usually about 500 copper each. With the amount of copper that you're going to make, within the level you should be able to purchase every single one. However, obviously there will be some ones that aren't really appropriate to what you're trying to do. But if you've got the money, just get it. You're going to have such a stacked build. Probably one of the most stacked builds you're probably ever going to have within any of the builds. And just because solely you paid for it. If you are going to play an easier to casual setting, you're going to have money galore. And you can just basically buy your way through everything. But in a harder setting, results will vary. It all depends on your skill level. One thing I do guarantee though is, is you're going to have a lot of fun with this build. I will be doing a breakdown of all the tips that I suggest you should do. So just keep tuned guys, keep watching to the end and you'll see some tips. I'll lay them out for you. All the important things that you should know with this build. So my recommendation for this build guys is to use Tala. She does have a certain trait that I'm going to exploit. So we'll get into her traits right now. And they are... She can attack cause targets to bleed. She can also Jeff the friendly tall boy. Can be called by anyone with his whistle and our team effects are plus one warp chest and whistle spawn on each map. So we are going to exploit the warp chest. There is also two other things there that are quite good. Jeff, the friendly tall boy, he can be called with whistle, you'll find it within the map. Pick it up, use the whistle and then drop it again because you do want the toolkits in this build. So definitely make sure you got them. Um, the other one that we're going to explore in a different build, not this one, is the fact that this is the only character, she's unique. So she's the only character that can do bleed attack. So there will be a bleed build that I wanna do later. It'll be mainly a focused damage bleed build and she will be the only one that basically can do it. But with this build guys, we're gonna focus on the warped chest. The fact that Tyler can spawn one extra one. So with the Ridden Hive DLC, there's usually two. She will add the extra third. In a normal non-DLC level, she will create the one to spawn each level. You do have to look for it though, they are hidden, but they're not too hard. So bring your toolkits guys, if you don't, you will have to open the chest with our one. Any warp chest that you open will cause a penalty against you, and that's just not really taking advantage of this build at all. So definitely bring your toolkits. So let's just get straight into the build now. So number one, this is Bounty Hunter. When you or your team kills a mutation, you gain 10 copper, up to 300 per level. So obviously every mutation that you do kill, to rack up 10 copper, 300 max per level, it's going to stack up pretty good. They're going to have a bit of a slow burn effect. It's not something you're going to notice straight away, but over time, this will build your copper. So number two, this is compound interest. This is a team effect. Each cleaner will gain 5% of their total copper in each safe room. Again, this is a slow burn kind of card. This will obviously stack up in the long run. Number three, lucky pennies. Whenever you or your team loots copper, you have a 35% chance to find 100% additional copper. This is probably the more immediate noticeable one that you'll find. Number 4, this is money grabbers. So when your team loots copper, you gain 3 additional copper up to 25 times. So no matter what, you're still receiving copper even if you don't actually pick it up. Number 5, copper scavenger. You can sense nearby copper. So this will add more copper to the game, so more copper piles will spawn. Now I really do think this one just really goes without explanation. There's just, just going to be more copper within the game. Number 6. Share the wealth. Each teammate gains 100 bonus copper at the start of each level. Number 7. Hazard pay. You gain 250 bonus copper at the start of each level. So no real explanation for the last two. It's just copper up front at the beginning of the level. You're going to obviously immediately notice that. Number 8 shoulder bag this will add two to your support inventory by having this this will allow you to hold more toolkits number nine weapon smith so you would have seen this card in a few decks already this will allow the ability to unbolt attachments from weapons outside of the safe room unbolting the attachments will cost 400 copper and the team effect is additional copies of weapon smith played will reduce its cost by 100 copper each this is going to give you the ability to detach weapon mods this is going to help you and more importantly your team with the amount of copper that you're going to get do not be stingy so look after yourself but definitely look after your teammates as well detach those weapon mods for them Number 10, Weapon Scavenger. You can sense nearby weapons, so more weapons will spawn. There is one particular gold mod that you want to look out for, it's called the Grim Reaper mod. It is extremely rare to get, 
and by having the weapon scavenger card on there will be purple rarity weapons that will spawn and there will be a very slim chance that this gold attachment may be on the weapon. So really the idea is simple, more weapons in the level, more chances of getting the weapon that you actually want. So number 9 will work really well with this card. The more weapons that are out there, the more chances of mods being attached to them. With the weaponsmith, you have the option at any time to detach them. We are going to focus more on stamina now. We are kind of done with the fortune luck aspect of the build. So moving on to number 11, energy bar. This will give you 30% stamina regeneration and plus 5 to health. Number 12, cross trainers. 20% stamina, 20% stamina regen, 3% move speed and 5 to health. Number 13, Adrenaline Fueled. When you kill an enemy, you gain 5 stamina instantly and an additional 7 stamina over 7 seconds, stacking up to 5 times. Again, this is a really important card to have. You obviously got to kill the enemies to get the stamina boost, but this will maintain your stamina over the levels. So now for this bow and arrow build, these two next cards, Slugger and Brazen, they are without a doubt probably the most important cards you're going to have in this build. You'll probably also notice that these are the only two specialized bow and arrow cards in the whole entirety of the deck. So, what do they do? Number 14, Slugger. 5% health, 10% melee stamina efficiency, 20% melee attack speed, 10% bow stamina efficiency, and 20% bow attack speed. Number 15, this is Brazen. And that's 15% melee stamina efficiency, 20% melee attack speed, 15% bow stamina efficiency and 20% bow attack speed. So that concludes this bow and arrow fortune build. I do hope you enjoy it and you do like it. If you do play this on a more harder setting, just have some teammates with you, but you do have to understand your role within this build. You are to pay for everything. Obviously it's not expected on you all the time, but if you have that extra copper, don't be stingy. You gotta spend it. If you don't spend it, you're just gonna lose it. You're gonna waste it. So do pause the video guys, do take the tips in and in the meantime I will be focusing more on other builds. I am going to create obviously a few more in the future, just bear with me. If there's anything you did like, please consider subscribing. It will help me out and until then I'll see you in the next.